Welcome to the Gentleman's Guide to Vampires. Tonight we shall be discussing the gargoyles. Oh, the gargoyles, a bloodline that warms the cockles of an undead heart. Oh, Spartacus Unchained is how I think of them. The little dogs that could. Such an inspirational bloodline, are they? Gargoyles, mutants, aberrations, constructs, creations. Not truly of the bloodline of Cain. Not one bit. Well, I say not one bit. Three bits, truly. Vastania, an elder of Clan Tremere, supposedly extant, although a vampire of great age, if she is still around, and of possible prominence in either the Anarchs or the Sabbat, she was responsible for the creation of the Gargoyles. In the Dark Ages, shortly after the initial vampirism of House Tremere, the Gargoyles were created as a response to the Vosged and the other diabolical creations of Clan Zimitsi. You see, the Tremere, whilst they were awesomely skilled at the art of thaumatogy, they were not necessarily built to fight, and they still had not wrapped their head around ghouling and recruiting humans to do thy bidding. And so they did what they knew best, and that was blood magic, and so they also went about the way that they initially approached vampirism, which was through kidnap. They kidnapped a number of Zimisi, Nosferatu, and Gangrel from around Chioris, the location of their initial chantry. And upon them they experimented with foul formatogies. The end result was the gargoyles. Gargoyles were created from a mixture of Zimitsi, Gangrel, and Nosferatu blood, which perhaps explains why they are so earth-based, why they are so savage, and also hideously ugly. Now that could be the end of the tale of the gargoyles quite happily, and thus they remain slaves ever perched on the corners of rooftops, serving the Tremere with their baleful eyes, ready to swoop down and snatch poor unsuspecting victims from the streets. No, the gargoyles were not done. For truly, for around hmm, 200, 300 years, 200 years, no, 300 years, I'll go for 300, the gargoyles were loyal servants and rightly feared by many Cainites in Eastern Europe. The Bruja, who at one point had a grudge against the Tremere, dared not approach Chioris in, in fear of these winged vampires, for that is what they were. Gargoyles still had to subsist off of blood, just like any other vampire. And while their skin may be as stone due to their prestigious fortitude, and while their fists may be like uh, boulders of granite rolling towards your face, that is due to their potence. And while they may have exhibited their own discipline later, a visceratica that had not, allow, not just allowed them to gain a chameleon-like form around rock, but also at some levels, they say, withstand sunlight, provided they did not move, and acted as the statues that they were seen quite often to be. The gargoyles were vampires. Vampires with flight in some cases, with devilish weapons, claws that were sharp and fiendish and could inflict the same deadly aggravated damage that a gangrel was capable of. I wonder where that came from. The gargoyles were vampires. They still are vampires. Gargoyles drink blood. They do not eat. They do not sleep except during the day. Except, of course, as we've just found out, they can stay awake, providing they are static, permanent watchdogs. What more could the Tremere have asked for in loyal servants than these fiercely blood-bound creatures? Now, Vastania, to return to her, was very much in love with her servants. She loved the gargoyles more than she loved Cain, kindred both. And so, around the time of the Anarch Revolt, Vastania had perhaps had enough of the subjugation of her children as she saw them. She let every gargoyle go free. Now it is said that they were bound by blood to her and she broke the blood bond and with a command she said, go, you are free now. 
She diabolized the keeper of the house of Chioris. She allowed the gargoyles to fly away into the night, where many of them, of course, met final death, not being accustomed to freedom, and Vastania disappeared into history. Not every gargoyle was free, of course not everyone was based at Chioris, but the damage done through this massacre of Tremere in attendance, the gargoyle, they were not prepared for the gargoyles to fight back, or indeed for a war within their own walls. This destroyed Chioris almost entirely, and it is a sad fact that the Tremere very rarely admit to, but they're moving um, to another Chantry in Vienna was due to the gargoyles and their destruction of the Chantry that the Tremere had held from way back when they were mortal mages. So let's not undermine the efforts of the gargoyles to really mess up the knights of the Tremere. Where does this leave the gargoyles for the last 500 years, however? The Anarch Revolt was in the 15th century, and what have the gargoyles been doing since then? Well, it depends on the gargoyle. You see, some of them, Ferox, for instance, has become a beacon of true faith. It is said that his eyes alone emit beams of true faith, whether you can believe that or not. Another, Rusticus, is supposedly a great champion of the Sabbat, or Camera, depending on who you ask. Some say red-listed, some say a hero among Anarchs. Rusticus is one of these gargoyles that inspires legend and terror in equal measure. Gargoyles typically have very little place in a Camarilla city. After all, the Tremere, who are one of the strongest pillars of the Camarilla, still see them as servants and nothing more. They are lapdogs broken free of their leash, and so they need to be reined in. Most gargoyles won't stand for that, and those that do, do not get the respect of their fellows and contemporaries within the same bloodline. So gargoyles within the Camarilla are rarely afforded the level of respect they perhaps desire. The Sabbat, because of their prejudice against Clan Tremere, likewise do not treat the gargoyles with the respect perhaps they would like. It is a, perhaps a bit depressing that the pandas, clanless vampires, are able to achieve more in the way of title and stature in the Sabbat than a gargoyle anti-tribute may be. And this results in the gargoyles being largely independent, both of coterie and sect. Gargoyles often have very solitary lifestyles, and this perhaps puts them more in line with the gangrel than any of their forebears, because the gangrel are quite often happy to wander outside alone for centuries. And of course, their discipline Viseratica, allowing them to sink into solid rock, is similar to Protean, also wielded by the gangrel. Now, where does this leave the gargoyle? Something of an anomaly. In this increasingly dangerous time known as the Final Nights, Gehenna upon us, sides are being chosen by bloodlines and clans all over. The Gangrel were one of the very few to declare independence of the Camarilla rather than falling in with a sect. And so many eyes are turned to the gargoyles as they are with the Asamites and indeed some of the newly appeared bloodlines where will their allegiances fall when the antediluvians begin to rise if indeed that is what is going to happen none can truly say my money however would not be on the camarilla you see the tremere have recently started creating gargoyles again now, the Gangrel, when they found out about this, reacted very violently indeed. The ZMC pointed out, well, we said this would happen if you trusted them, and the Nosferatu have skulked away from the Tremere in fear. The truth of the matter is, and my informants tell me, that these new gargoyles are not made of ZMC blood, the Nosferatu blood, or Gangrel blood, but of Tremere blood. You see, the blood bond in the final nights is getting weaker. Not just between Tremere and Gargoyle, but Tremere and Tremere. And this is resulting in more young Tremere joining in with the Anarchs. When the hardline Camarilla Tremere find them, how better to punish the wayward child than to turn him into one of their loyal lapdogs? What this was resulting in is Gargoyles capable of wielding thaumatogy in flight of all things. It sounds preposterous, 
and yet this is what I am told. Not only this, but Verstania, if she is still existing, she is the one who truly holds the reins of power. She is seen as a figurehead, as a legendary heroine of the Gargoyles, as their mother. They often refer to her as mother when referring to her. So, what if she were to suddenly appear with one of the sects behind her and say, To me, my feral child, to me. Is the blood bond between her and them truly broken? Could she wield them at a moment's notice? Would their independence suddenly snap shut and all of a sudden they are called back to their mistress? Does she belong to House Tremere? Does she belong to House Goratrix? Is she independent? Is she fighting for another side? One of the most alarming tales that I have heard is that Verstania is in league with the followers of Set. Imagine that. Imagine the face of North Africa changing, the perpetual war between Asamite and follower of Set, concluding as the followers of Set are dramatically aided by an army of winged rock vampires. Even the Asamites were to be given pause for thought, and you can be sure that they would blame the Tremir <laughs> for that little gift. Gargoyles are an interesting little juxtaposition in these final nights. No one knows what they are going to do. The few individuals that I have encountered have been, shall we say, more contemplative than you would possibly imagine from a creature with tusks, horns, long claws and talons, and a body that's made of rock. These gargoyles are prone to introspection. They are gaining aspects of their former lives. They are finding out that there is more to existence than mere servitude. Indeed, some are still breaking free from the Tremere leash even now. Existence as a gargoyle must be tough, and yet they can throw their weight around. The masquerade is arguably not a place for them unless particularly prolific uh, use of obfuscate is used. So the Camarilla does not provide a natural base for the bloodline known as the Gargoyles. Even in the Sabbats, the Gargoyles are unlikely to fly around in, let's say, Montreal with impunity. Eventually, people will notice, and even the Sabbat is wary enough of mortal authority and their power of the sun than, uh, to allow Gargoyles to fly around on the streets plucking cops out of cars and whatnot. So what will the gargoyle do? I wonder what you would like to see them do, little neonate. I wonder which way the table would tip in your imagination. Can the gargoyles completely unexpectedly be the force that can tip the sectarian war one way or another? Just imagine it, the shock troops that one sect truly needs. Impervious to harm, practically impervious to sunlight. Ravenous for blood, for free will, and for respect. To the right master, with the best cajoling tongue, the gargoyles could be the perfect slaves all over again.